Oh, this is amazing. This is so good. I nearly just cut my finger off. Oh. Hey everyone, hope you are well. Uh, today we're doing another kitchen gadget testing haul, part of an epic playlist here on the channel where I've reviewed hundreds of kitchen gadgets, so do check that out at the end of this video. And before commenting down below, please consider that some of these gadgets can help people with certain disadvantages in the kitchen to perform certain tasks. I'm not so sure today. Some are useful, some are novelty, as we'll find out now. All right, first up is this uh, vegetable chopper, and I'm not sure if you can see the text on the screen there. It says faster, comma, neater, no comma, chopping, exclamation mark, chopping. It's like a big plastic push down tub thing. Looks quite self-explanatory there. Uh, perfect for chopping onions and making chips. Oh yes, we're gonna make chips. We need it for another gadget. Or sticks from potatoes, carrots, and courgettes. Sharp stainless steel blades, collects chopped pieces as it cuts. Fast and easy to use and dismantles for easy cleaning. It's also dishwasher safe, so uh, Let's go. Oh, I'm not gonna to touch on this subject too much, but my back generally is not enjoying having this sort of setup for the time being. Hopefully we'll have a cam soon, all right? I really need a cam. Wow, this looks more like a toy, but it is not a toy. It's a bit dirty. That is really dirty. Right, I'm gonna give this a wash a minute. So what effectively happens is you've got these indents here that line up with that. So this is your gripper. You put your food in there and it's just basically, a push down gadget. Just put the food in and just really apply that pressure. Now, I'm not sure. Potatoes and courgettes, yes, and onion maybe just about, but carrot. Let's see how we get on. We need potatoes first, so let's do that first of all. Potato goes down here, so it doesn't really stop it moving. It's all flush. It's moving. Ugh. Um. Oh, blimey. See, once I get it into those grooves there, Oh no, please don't break. Oh no! Ah, uh, my gosh! Ah, oh, no! Oh no! Oh, I've broke the blades on it! Ah oh, no! Jeez, oh, I don't think I can fix this. That is really dangerous. Um. Great start, oh my gosh. That was my safe bet as well. I do not want to risk that anymore. I'm so sorry. I was gonna, I've even signed the box. Does anyone, oh, the lucky patron's gonna get a signed empty box with some loose blades. I don't even know if the post office will let me send that. <gasps> Look, that's cut, oh no. Right, I'm just gonna This next one is not effectively a gadget. In the words of Queen, it's a kind of magic. This uh, is the Quick Shine Deep Fat Fixer. I did not know this existed. It is basically that turns used cooking oil solid to make it easier uh, to dispose of and clean your device. So you can use it in a fryer, a chip pan, or indeed a wok or a frying pan if you're doing, say, shallow frying, which is really, really cool. It turns the used cooking oil into an easy, pleasant experience. <laughs> Very nice. With no spills, no mess, and no risk of clogging your drains. So it just turns it into a solid made from 100% non-toxic toxic, eco-safe ingredients. Chips. Hey ho, in they go. I don't know how I stumbled upon this one, because um, that last gadget in the nicest way uh, was one that someone sent me a link to, and I was like, oh, it's not something I'd normally get. And I nearly just cut my finger off <laughs> grabbing it. I was like, oh, look, this is completely genuine. This is my side here. I nearly went to grab this potato here, and I was like, oh no. But this one, I think I saw like this image, like see how they're literally spooning out a massive piece of lard. Um, if we can do that, that's gonna be amazing because that is really tricky to clean sometimes. Like I think it should be very, very rarely looking as clean as that. I think you should really make the most of your oil. But I think most people use an air fryer, <coughs> hair dryer these days. So Tucker's just cooling down for the time being. As I said, there's a few gadgets today. There's one more as well that people have sent me. This one. Uh, is a very fun one indeed and reminds me of one of the first gadgets that I ever ever did. Oh my gosh There are no instructions in it whatsoever. It looks like a sort of weird faded candle chicken holder Reverse that around, but it's not it, this is genuinely an egg separator. On the subject of that scene, I know a lot of you guys enjoyed uh, Gary being in a video and I will definitely uh, get him back on, but I actually got him pranked uh, another day. I sent him a foot fetish kit uh, and inside there was a little note saying, dear Gary, you are a good egg. Just washing my chicken. Look at that. <laughs> so kind of like what the chicken just did with the water there, uh, like 
effectively throwing it up, vomiting water. Um, this is what this is supposed to be a parody of. It's supposed to be an egg uh, being sick with egg whites in its mouth, keeping the yolk inside. All right, here we go. Let's see if we can separate the egg. Look at that. Oh, that looks disgusting. <laughs> Look, the yolk's just sat there going, where are you guys going? Don't leave me. It's pretty much all gone. In fact, if I rotate like that a little bit more, that some might try and come out. I'm doing an omelette anyway, so we'll leave that. <laughs> Exceptional Boston, eh? Now, I've never done this before, but I'm gonna put a candy thermometer into here to see, or just double check, uh, that is under 130C because then we can get our granules in and turn this into a big old slab. <laughs> yep, so reminder, it is unplugged. Uh, if you're doing it with a wok, uh, take it off the heat. The oil was holding at 118-ish degrees. So in this goes, nothing is really happening, but we do have to stir it around. I'm actually really excited because it should just pop out of this at some stage. Uh, and I'm gonna put it out the back here. Right. We crack some eggs, so we need some fillings for our omelette. Here's another gadget that we'll also use for a final gadget right at the end too, to maybe make a peached lumpy tea thing. Yeah, this is one uh, that I've also been sent, and I was like, ah, oh, I've kind of done something similar to this before. I think it was more of a salad thing, uh, but this is a, a vegetable chopper, but you use a handle to pull it, kind of like a lawnmower starting. And I, I, the reason I put this is because we're going to get a bit crazy uh, with the final uh, gadget. So uh, let's give this a wash. It's fairly self-explanatory. Uh, spinny blades, uh, and we're going to make our omelette, hopefully in it. Is it moving? Yes. Let's beat our eggs first for the omelette. <laughs> yes! Um, so, I've got, just to one side here, I've got like some pepper. Um, I cut it really rough, like a little square piece like that. But to help it, can you tell I'm being a bit cautious now after that first one? Um, I'm gonna rip this up into, I've got sticks, but I'm just gonna break them down a little bit more. Here we go, will it chop the uh, peppers? Yes, it will. Yes, it will. Oh my gosh, look. I did the same with some onion. This might not work. Hey, what, blooming well has. I think, anyway. <laughs> I can't actually tell. Like fishing for onion. No, it's pureed it so much, like it's literally the whole thing is gone. I mean, of course we can do lots of other things with this. And in fact, we will try in a moment. That. It's some grated cheese, which is now even more grated. Great. Oh, wow, look at that. That is amazing. That's done a brilliant job. Oh, wow. Oh, hot, they're really, really nice. Well, that worked. All right, so before we finish uh, with the big one, this is a, a digital measuring spoon or a digital spoon scale. Uh, it does grams, ounces, and it's uh, got a digital thing on it uh, so that you can measure things out. Uh, boom! Wow! Actually that is a huge measuring area, look at that! You could get loads of stuff in there. There we go, can you see? So it's zero zero now. I, I, I'm finding it really hard to sort of show you like the display on that, it's really bizarre. There's only one angle, even for me as I look at it, it's literally, but you're gonna have to trust me, okay? And then of course, I want to find out what a teaspoon of paprika weighs. So I've got this windscreen wiper little gadget there from a previous video. This is supposed to be bang on a teaspoon, okay? 2.5 grams. I'm not sure, I'm gonna do a quick Google, but that sounds bang on. Can you see the 2.5? One teaspoon of paprika or other powders in grams. Oh, it says two grams. What? What the heck is, is it, what? Let's do this again. 2.5. <laughs> it's literally 2.5. I'd imagine there are some really useful tasks for that, particularly if you're specifically measuring out certain things. I'm quite happy with my teaspoon measures, but I know there's some people that would bloomin' love that, particularly in baking. Anyhow, anyone for iced coffee? As always, folks, hope you've enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe if you fancy it and check out the rest of the videos here on the channel. There's blooming hundreds over the years. And of course, uh, the gadget playlist, if you're enjoying these, uh, by Breville, a well-known brand. This is the iced 
coffee making machine. Refreshing iced coffee in minutes. I've got minutes and I've got some ice because you do need it. It uses ground coffee, but we might break up our own. You fill it with ice up to the line, put the tumbler in place and then basically press start. Uh, and then it will make us an iced coffee. Is it gonna crush the ice? Uh, I don't know. Is it gonna boil the water somehow to make the coffee grounds become coffee and then cool it down with the ice? I don't know. But we can find out what that was close. Sorry, it's a bit, bit gloomy in here. I've not got the lights or anything because I don't really know where to put them. Oh my gosh, this is brilliant. Why does that smell of strawberries? A bit of a beast of a machine, but it is incredibly light. There's all sorts of weird things going on. It's really stressing the importance to wash this. I am gonna do that, all right? Uh, but my battery is about to go. Step one, fill the tumbler to the water line uh, with clean filtered water. I'm not that flush, we're just gonna take it out of the tap, all right? Ah, <laughs> oh, gosh, this is really hard to do. Lift the lid of the unit and remove the brew basket, exposing the water reservoir. So it says to fill this with the water. Cool. Place the brew basket back on top of the reservoir. Okay. Well, that just floats in there like that. Slide the drip stop switch to open. Ugh! What? What? No! What? What the heck? It literally just told me to slide that across so all the water came out. I'm going to start again. Hang on. Hang on a sec. That, I've just taken the bigger bucket out and this looks a lot more and it's beneath that bit. That looks where I think it should have gone. Be right back. Ah, so this is the brew basket. We poured it straight into the brew. So if I go like that now, look, yeah. <laughs> I don't like reading the instructions. All right, folks, so I'm just adding in some coffee grounds. Oh my gosh, it's going everywhere. <laughs> Random fact, I used to work in a bank and my favorite first job I had there was to fill the coffee machine up because it always smelled like this. I used to hate coffee till I met Mrs. B. But this actually does bring back weird trigger memories of that. So what the heck's gonna happen here? Is it gonna boil it or something? I'm so confused. We've got water on the beaker and then above it, right at the top, right near the lip, can you see it? It actually says ice. So that goes on there. Press the start button. Oh. Something's happening. So effectively, we're brewing the coffee and it's coming down. Oh, look, look at that. Oh, this is amazing. I think this was about 30 pounds, this, um, this gadget. Wait three to four minutes uh, for the brewing to complete. Once the dripping slows and stops, slide the drip stop to the close to stop the flow of coffee. Add in your favorite coffee mixings for coffee, just how you like it. This is a genuinely true story. Mrs. B has been very unwell with COVID. Uh, the other day she was like, please make me a coffee. I made her it. It's too much milk in it. Like, okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. So it's kind of like a little mini kettle coffee brewer in one. I, for some reason, I thought it was gonna whiz the ice up. I didn't really look at anything more than the box. I was like, yeah, that's cool. I'm gonna get that. Definitely sounds like it's coming to the end. I'm gonna stop it. Stay. Uh, I'm sorry for the drop in production value, <laughs> uh, but I'm doing my best. Look at this. Oh my gosh, isn't that not the coolest thing you've ever seen? I love that. Oh. The heck was that? Right. Oh, that is blooming nice. Strong enough for me as well. And that is quite a lot of coffee as well. Right, we did a gadget earlier that helped us make an omelette. Can we use that to whiz up roasted coffee beans for this? Hmm. So here are coffee beans. Here's our amazing whizzy gadget from earlier. Now I don't know if this is gonna do much of a job because the first blade is quite high up. So I'm feeling like I need to fill this quite a way to try and get it to at least like break down some things and then maybe the rest will rise up. You raise me up so I can grind into granules. <laughs> Beautiful. Look at that. Okay, it's not all perfect. I'd say like 60% are fully, fully ground. The rest are slightly more coarse. I guess we'll see what happens. Mm. 
it is sort of working. It's not quite as dark as the actual full on grounds, but you know, trying it with that other gadget, there is a real mix, like I say, of ground and slightly still coarse, so maybe it's not working as well. Spoiler alert, that's pretty legit true, yeah. Oh, this might not look so good. Look, it's quite weak at the top. More of a latte vibe, I guess. Mm. That's like 20% coffee. The rest tastes like watery milk. Okay, well, that didn't work so well. We tried for a bit of fun. I want to finish with one more bit of fun. Can we do a peach iced tea? <laughs> I've never had a peach diced tea before and I'm fairly certain this isn't how you make it. That is amazing. Like that is legit awesome. Look, it's shredded. This is some loose leaf tea, okay? So what I'm gonna do is put some peach in here with it to see if it actually drink, brings some of that flavor through. It probably won't. And then also chilled chopped peach. Our peachy tea leaves are sitting in here. The water is already in place. Back down. And uh, Batman meme joker, here we go. That is definitely working, like, better than I thought. Look at this. This is amazing. This is so good. Right, I'm gonna stop that now. Oh, it smells so strong. Oh my gosh. We've gone from quite a weak, fresh ground coffee bean thing to like an extra, I feel like I've just put a tea bag, like maybe like a, a bunch of tea bags, literally just shoved them in my mouth and chewed on them like chewing gum. That is ridiculously strong. And you know how much I hate tea. I'm not getting any, uh, so I'll have some more. Oh, no peach at all. Well, thanks so much for watching. I've just signed that one. If there was a favorite today, I was like, yeah, I think it's that one, if you stick to normal iced coffee. But I think, in a strange way, this hand pull mixer thing that I was sent, a kind of a twist on one that I've had before, was incredible. That was so good. Like, the coffee beans as well, almost, helping with the omelet beating the eggs. That was incredible. I think we can all agree which one was the worst one. Good luck to the lucky patron that gets that. Please consider supporting the channel on Patreon if you wish uh, for extended raw unedited versions for years on the on the channel. Videos that you probably think, wow, like they're over an hour long at least uh, and a lot of people love it. So consider that if you want. It does help me pay for an egg or two. Thanks so much, folks. See you soon. Ciao for now. Bye. Oh no, we haven't actually finished the video, have we? We haven't done the deep fat fryer thing. Ping. Look at this. We are left with this massive block. Ugh. It's still a little warm, but I can touch it. Oh, look. I think this is worse than blooming. Oh, look. I can't get it out as a block because it's still, it's still slightly warm. But. <laughs> Just to show you, it has actually done it. It's still warm. It's actually quite soothing. This is not a fail. This is a pass. It's because, I mean, this has been like two and a half hours since that's been there. So it's, it really does need to go super cold. However, look, that has congealed together. It's a little bit like mashed potato. And even still, that is a darn sight easier to dispose of, <laughs> he says. And even if it was just like that, I wouldn't mind, but it should have come out in a nice, firmed up block. Um, we'll take that as a win. So yeah, I'm gonna stick to my original thing, the uh, handheld whizzy chopper thing, the pool handle thing was the best. Take care folks, and uh, that's pretty cool.